Hello, my name is Andrew Williams, and this is my collaboration and leadership reflection video for Nursing 4010, leading people, processes, and organization in an interprofessional practice. This video will reflect on a personal interprofessional collaboration experience, noting how it was successful and unsuccessful in achieving desired goal. I would include how reflective nursing practice can help better understand past experience and improve future practice decisions. I will also discuss the Villa Health scenario and identify how poor collaboration can result in insufficient human and financial resource management. I will indicate best practice leadership strategies from a literature to improve the interdisciplinary team abilities to achieve its goal. I will identify best practice interdisciplinary collab collaboration strategies to help a group achieve its goal and work together more efficiently. To sum it all up, I will explain how change management theories and leadership strategies can enable interdisciplinary teams to achieve specific goal and promote organization health. So let me reflect on a personal interprofessional collaboration experience during the pandemic. I worked as a lead nurse on a COVID vaccine team. We were working in a relatively small space. We saw a large number of patients each day. We had so many nurses and clerks working in a small area that safety became a concern. Leadership realized it was not a safe environment and wanted to move the operation to a more suitable space. The project was not an easy task because it required collaboration of multiple people from different departments. We had an engineer came in to determine the layout of the environment. Facilities provided furniture and equipment. They also painted and installed new cables and data ports. Information technology installed computers, printers, um, telephone system, and then the environmental services provided sharps containers, dustbins, and mounted wall puree system. One of the Built, once the build out was completed, the people part of the project was initiated. Operations determined the best practice for patient flow through the system from the moment the patient entered the building to the patient exits. Nursing established what supplies were essential to the, uh, for delivering the best patient experience, and pharmacy arranged the installation of specific refrigerators dedicated for the COVID vaccine storage. Hospital police was also there to manage the flow of the patient. The moving day arrived and the transition to the new space was completed. Overall, the project outcome was successful, but not without some latent resistance from some staff. At first, some people were divided about the move but eventually began to accept the change. The space, the new space had large windows that provided better lighting. The old era was, had no windows and used fluorescent lighting. The new site offered a better patient flow, while the old space was, only con was always congested and confusing. The rewards and the benefit of the move were evident for both the nurses and the patient and it was declared a change process success. The so interdisciplinary collaboration on the project produced a favorable outcome. Everyone worked together to complete the project and achieve the desired goal. Reflecting on the process, I can see where team members were allowed the flexibility and remained creative and innovative within the boundaries of a framework provided by leadership. Their input were evaluated and adapted when cohesive to the achievement of the goal. According to Nate et al. in 2021, 
building trust and loyalty along with clarity of benefit is necessary to successfully manage a process of change in an organization. Timely, com timely communication with the staff nurses was unsuccessful. Leadership never disclosed their intent of the move until the new space was built out and ready to move. The day of the move felt a bit rushed. Several nurses thought that some of the new process were not efficient. Staff nurse were not included as members of the interprofessional teams and were not given the opportunity to contribute to the change process. Leaving staff nurses off the team meant that issues surrounding their task performance were left to be ironed out as they occurred. Desire patients and system outcome were to change the process of providing vaccines to the public and enhance patient safety, experience, and satisfaction. We successfully achieved that outcome because of the transformational management style used by leadership. Transformational leaders can gain the trust and innovation of a group by offering support and freedom to express and pursue ideas within the limits of a framework. Hussein et al. 2018. Now let's look at the Villa scenario. Using reflection of my past interprofessional collaboration experience, I can see several factors that contributed to the outcome of the Villa Health scenario. Two of the main factors that contributed to the unsuccessful outcome are the poor communication approach used and the leadership style utilized. The communication between corporate and the site administrator, Stephen, caused the administrator to feel undervalued and unappreciated. His feeling of being unappreciated reduced his motivation to participate in the change process. In an article published in 2018, Hussein et al. stated that the outcome of systemic change process is dependent on the level of employee resistance, resistance and the motivation for the change. The action from corporate office can be classified as a transactional leadership style and is known for a top-down, high controlled leadership um, style. The transactional leadership style can be classified as a reward or punishment relationship. On the contrary, transformational leadership styles utilize charisma, influence, support, and motivation of staff to engage in change in a change process. Arison et al. in 2021 suggested that using a transformational leadership style, excuse me, who's Arison et al. in 2021 suggested that using a transformational guideline framework has been proven to be more successful than a top-down transactional leadership style in approaching system-wide change. The communication approach used by the corporate hired consultant, Josh, was highly inefficient. He refused to listen to anyone in the facility and his attitude, attitude created confusion and non-productive atmosphere. The IT department responded with minimal effort to engage in the, ch in the change process. The nurses felt unsupported and decided to disengage, so communication broke down even further. The inefficient communication between staff, leadership, and the consultant caused more harm than good. Good communication is the foundation for interprofessional collaboration success. The staff disengaged and the minimal collaboration resulted in an inefficient use of human and financial resources and negatively affected the organization health. Pichon and Rivera et al. in 2020 said that two of the main contributing factors to inefficient use of human and financial resources are how the process of change is perceived and how the change process is implemented. The facility administrator felt excluded due to the lack of legitimacy in the decision-making process. He was not allowed an input on the 
he was not allowed an input on the choice of product or its implementation. The corporate hired consultant communication approach and attitude demoralize, demo, demoralize, <laughs> I'm sorry, demoral, moral, oh my gosh. Okay, let's try that one more time. The corporate hired consultant communication approach and attitude demoralized the IT staff, causing staff engagement and a lack of commitment to the change. The lack of proper training on the new system resulted in feelings of inadequacy and frustration for some nurses. The combination of issues associated with the administrator, the IT staff, and the nurses contributed to an overall loss of production hours for the organization. The best practice interdisciplinary collaboration strategies to help a team be more effective and achieve its goal incorporates employee engagement activities, strategies that provide support for team members with task, creativity, and innovation are very effective in achieving desired goals. Hussein et al. 2018. Transformational leadership style offer the best practice strategies for an interdisciplinary team to achieve its goal. Nate et al. in 20. 18 case report concluded that a transformational leadership style with an holistic perspective is essential for interprofessional collaboration success. Harrison et al. in 2021 concurred that guiding frameworks and flexibilities are essential values of transformational leaderships to keep employee engaged and en able professional teams to achieve organization goal. In closing, interprofessional collaboration is a good vehicle for transformation for organizational change. The desired outcome probability increases when guided by a transformational leader with an holistic perspective and a practical communication approach. People naturally are resistant to change, especially when the benefits of the change are unclear. Harrison et al. in 2020. When leadership engage staff and other support with a framework, team members' commitment to task increases and the likelihood of success improves. In the Villa Health scenario, the use of reflective nursing practice may have helped the nurses identify and examine their biases about the situation and each other. According to Mahone and O'Neill, Unconscious biases can influence decision-making, reinforce stereotypes, and perception about a situation. Reflective nursing practice may have helped Lisa assess her unconscious biases and develop a better attitude about her own abilities to adapt to the change. Finally, to overcome a, the, Finally, the outcome of an interprofessional collaboration can be influenced by leadership styles, the, legit, liturg the legitimacy of decision, the reflective practice of team members, and the communication skills, and the motivation of each other. That's my reflective video. Thank you very much. Have a great day.